Part C, find the average value of f on the interval negative 1 to 1. So the average value of a function over an interval is just going to be, so let's just write average. The average value of our function is just going to be the integral over the interval, negative 1 to 1, of f of x, d of x, divided by our change in x. So divided by, sorry, this is from negative 1 to 1 negative 1 to 1, f of x, d of x, divided by our change in x. And our change in x is 1 minus negative 1. So this is going to be equal to 1 half times the integral. And here, f of x is piecewise defined. So what we can do is break up this integral into two intervals. We can say the integral of f of x from negative 1 to 0 of f of x dx plus let me just write it this way so we don't have to keep rewriting the 1 half. Let me write it, I'll do, use brackets. Plus the integral from, from 0 to 1 of f of x, f of x dx. And the reason why I broke it up like this is because this function is, is, has a different definition, or it takes, it's a different, it's piecewise defined. It's different when we're, when we're less than or equal to 0 at, versus when we are greater than 0. So that's why I like to break it up this way. So then we get this is equal to 1 half times, and in brackets, in big brackets like this, this first part right over here, we can write as the integral from negative 1 to 0. What is f of x between negative 1 and 0? It's 1 minus 2 sine of x. 1 minus 2 sine of x d, dx. And then plus this thing right over here, plus the integral from 0 to 1. And what is our function when it, between 0 and 1? It's e to the negative 4x. e to the negative 4x dx. And now we can do each of these integrals separately. And so this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to 1 half. And once again, I'll do a big open bracket right over here. My pen is getting loose. Let me tie on the, the front a little bit better. There you go. All right, back to work. So 1 half, open brackets. And now let's take the antiderivative of 1 minus 2 sine of x. Antiderivative of 1 with respect to x is just x. Negative 2 sine of x. Well, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So this is just going to be 2 cosine of x. And you can, you can verify that. Derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. You have the 2 out front, so it's negative 2 sine of x. So we're going to evaluate that at 0 and at negative 1. And to that, we are going to add, so let's do this definite integral over here, the antiderivative of e to the negative 4x. The antiderivative is going to be equal to negative, negative e to the negative 4x over 4. And the way you realize that is if you had just an e, if this was just an e to the x, then its antiderivative would just be e to the x. If you have an e to the negative 4x, then you know that whatever its antiderivative is is going to have a is going to be essentially an e to the negative 4x. But when you take its derivative, you're going to have to take the derivative of the negative 4x part because of the chain rule. And so you're going to have to have a negative 4 that comes out. But we don't see a negative 4 over here. We don't see a negative 4 here. So we're obviously going to have to divide by a negative 4 so it cancels out. Another way to think about it is we could have rewritten, we could have rewritten this thing so this is equal to e to the negative 4x dx. This is exactly what our problem is, what we need to take the definite integral. And so that it becomes completely clear so that the derivative of this thing is sitting around here. We could put a negative 4 over here. But you can't just willy-nilly throw a negative 4 there. You could put, you would have to put a negative 1 fourth outside of it in order for it to be, in order to negative 1 fourth times negative 4. You're, not, you're just multiplying by 1, which doesn't change the value. And then here, you'd clearly see here you'd clearly see that this is this right over here is the derivative of e to the negative 4x. So you'd have e to the negative 4x. The antiderivative of this is e to the negative 4x, and then you have this negative 1 fourth over here. So either way, either way, hopefully that makes sense. We go into more detail of that earlier in the calculus playlist. So then this is from we're going to evaluate it at 1 and at 0. Evaluate it at 1 and at 0. And then we want to close the brackets. And so what do we have here? This is equal to 1 half. Once again, open the brackets. 
If you evaluate all of this at zero, you get zero plus two cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, so you just get a two when you evaluate it at the zero. So you get a two, and then from that we want to subtract whatever we get when we evaluate it at negative one. We want to subtract negative one plus two cosine of negative one. Plus two cosine, two cosine of negative one. So that's this whole thing right over here evaluates to this whole thing right over there. And then we have plus, we want to evaluate this at one. So this gives us negative e to the negative four. It's four times one is just, or negative four x when x is one is negative four over four. And from that, we need to subtract this thing evaluated at zero. We need to subtract this thing evaluated at zero. So that's going to be negative e to the zero over four. Well, that's just e to the zero is one. So that's just negative one, negative one over four. And once again, all of this is going to be multiplied by one half. And now we just have to simplify it. So this is equal to, well, I'll just still throw out the one half here. This is equal to one half times so I'll do this in a new color here. Let me do it in, well, I don't have too many new colors. Okay, so this is equal to two plus one. So this and this together is going to be equal to three. And then you have this negative outside, so that why, that's why it was a plus one. And then you have a negative times a negative times a positive two, so minus two cosine of negative one. And then you have plus, plus or maybe I should say minus, minus e to the negative four over four. And then you have plus one fourth, plus one fourth. And then we want to close our brackets. And then we could do one last step of simplification here. Three, we could add the three to the one fourth. Three is the same thing as 12 over four. 12 over four plus one fourth is 13 fourths. So you have 13 fourths minus two cosine, two cosine of negative one, minus e to the negative four over four. And then of course you have your one half sitting out here. And it's not the most beautiful or simple thing, but this is, this is our answer. This is the average value of f of x over that interval.